And welcome once again to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. Joining me as he always does is Juan Zarate. He's our national security analyst. Juan, good to see you as always. Bob, wonderful seeing you. So let's talk about this latest problem with ISIS. They have this Japanese captive, and they've been issuing some pretty dire commands or demands. And now we see the latest demand. The time is running out and they want the Jordanians involved. Explain how this all fits. Well, you have the problem for the Japanese of their two hostages uh, being in ISIL custody, one being killed, uh, apparently beheaded. Uh, that increases pressure, obviously, in Tokyo and on Prime Minister Abe to try to figure out how to get the other hostage back. ISIL has obviously asked for a ransom, $200 million. Uh, that was seen as a bit of a, a rhetorical ploy because that was the amount that the Japanese had offered to support refugees and the anti-ISIL coalition. Uh, but now what you have is really a question as to whether or not this trade, the trade for a suicide bomber that had been part of this uh, attempt to attack weddings in Jordan, uh, whether or not she can be traded for the life of this Japanese hostage. And what this really does is it increases pressure between the Japanese and Jordanian governments as to whether or not a deal can be made, and frankly, whether or not a deal is actually warranted and wise, given that ISIL will continue to take hostages and the fact that they continue to hold the Jordanian pilot as well. And so this is really a critical moment in Tokyo because of the pressure to get the Japanese hostage out alive and also tension now between the Japanese and Jordanian governments as to how to make that happen. So the deal as proposed by ISIS or ISIL is they'll free this Japanese captive if the Jordanians set free this woman who tried to be involved with the suicide bombing of a wedding. I mean, that sounds like a non-starter to the Jordanians. It is, absolutely. And I think ISIL understands that. I think what ISIL is trying to do, both with its demands for $200 million, which they understood was probably not going to be met, and the demand for the return of, of this Jordanian uh, or this woman in Jordanian custody, is that these are non-starters, but they're pressure points. They're pressure points, and they highlight uh, real strategic points of leverage and fissures that ISIL can take advantage of. And what you see unfolding is the tension between the Japanese and Jordanian governments at a time when the Jordanians have their own concerns about their own pilot in ISIL custody. But what's the, what's the long game for ISIS here? Because if this doesn't work and they kill the hostage, they've infuriated the Japanese. They haven't done anything to help themselves with the Jordanians. They just made, uh, they've emboldened two more enemies. Yes and no. I mean, part of what they're trying to do is continue to remain relevant in the news. They're trying to terrorize and propagandize. They're also trying to weaken the coalition. And to the extent that they can create tension within countries, like in Tokyo, the question of how involved should they be when their citizens are being put in jeopardy, uh, and tensions between countries, like the Japanese and the Jordanians, relationships that actually matter long term. Can, can they create strategic fissures between those uh, countries? I mean, that's, that's a strategic victory, potentially, if that's what they're able to do in the killing of one hostage. They actually impact not just what happens in Tokyo, but what happens between Tokyo and Amman. That's, that's pretty significant. And just quickly as we wrap up, in terms of ISIS, the Iraqis have made some progress in pushing them out of places in Iraq. Now we hear the Kurds have pushed them out of uh, Kobani. Uh, is ISIS losing a bit of its power and a bit of its grip here or not? I, I don't think so. I mean, you certainly see the battle line shifting, and that's to be expected. And certainly with the pressure in Iraq and, and with the air coalition uh, damaging ISIL control of certain territory, Yes, that's, that's right. But they still control Mosul, they still control Fallujah, they still control uh, Raqqa, they still control vast swath of territory in Syria. And so this is going to be a long-term battle. The battle lines are going to shift day to day, but the reality is that ISIL continues to terrorize and continues to control territory, uh, and the fight with them is not over by a long stretch. Well, and thanks as always. Thank you, Bob. And thanks to you for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We'll see you next time.